Hello everybody, happy December, holy crap. What have the last two years been? I simply do not know. Welcome back to Dragon Spine. if you play Genshin Impact. Uh, if you don't play Genshin Impact, thanks for tuning in to watch a piece of fan art for a game you don't play. I know this is the unpopular opinion, but I love Dragon Spine. <laughs> like, I am so happy to be back here. I, there's something so special about it to me. And last year when it came out you know, during 1.2, like I was so elated. I just like snow areas and games so much. Like they fill me with such joy. I love winter in real life. Snow is one of the few things that fill me with actual joy. So we're working on a on an Albedo piece today. I'm doing a time-lapse because I forgot to hit screen record 98% of the time with this drawing. And I've also heard some people say like in passing that that like the screen recorded screen uh speed paints have you know can they feel kind of like motion sick sometimes so i don't know if this is better even though with these it's a little harder if i zoom in somewhere and i'm like working on a detail or something it's obviously a lot harder to see not that there's a ton of details in this uh close-up details or anything i kind of wish i had spent more time doing details um but I don't know, for somebody who is just trying to get back into making art at all, just having done a piece that's more than what you currently see on the screen, I'm going to consider a huge achievement. So as far as the kind of like speed paint video, just uh, let me know what you prefer. I don't know what it is about profile bodies. I have the worst time with them. You can see me just having a terrible time. And so at this point I was frustrated and I was like, okay, I'm gonna just do some loosening up sketches here. I was I was planning on doing like thumbnails for this piece to try to get like a silhouette to trace off of. So that's what this first little corner drawing is. And then once I kind of got into it, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna start trying to loosen up, just do some really crappy sketches to just warm up the wrist, um, quit getting frustrated to trying to like jump into it right off the bat. I'm terrible at warm ups. Like I am terrible at remembering to do like some kind of loosening practice or warming up. And whenever I sit down to sketch, I'm just ready to commit right off the bat. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be a final piece. And then when I'm unhappy with the sketch, I'm like, well, I guess I'm done for today because I'm terrible at everything. So that's something I need to remember to do is also like not spending too much time on any one sketch, especially if it's not supposed to be a final piece. Even if I'm unhappy with it, just keep moving on. So that's what I was trying to do here just trying to wake up the muscles a little bit. I was doing this on Thanksgiving day too, which like family holidays make me stressed. So I was pretty compulsive about just wanting to put my pen on uh, the screen here. So I took that little thumbnail that I did in the corner and I used it as a skeleton to yet again try and get this freaking pose right. This is the second drawing I've made where I was trying to do a pose very similar to this and it was just, I don't know why it's so hard. Probably because I never draw bodies from the side. The first time I was trying to do this, I just gave up and just cropped it so it was like just a head. But here I am really trying to figure it out. Um, I'm really committing to it. Like I said, I was doing this on a family holiday Holiday. I had the whole day of me just using this as an escape route. So I was like, cool, I have all the time in the world to get this right. Sketching is the hardest part for me, like with drawing, like it is the longest part of the process and the most frustrating half the time. I go through so many phases of sketching. It's just a mess. It's like original sketch, then I sketch on top of it and then I clean that sketch up and then I start doing line art. One thing that was kind of funny now that I look at the end of this is like at the very, very beginning, looking at the original sketch, it was just like the tiniest, it was like an inch tall doodle in my sketchbook where I was just like so pleased with the face. I was like, oh my God, this is so great. I wanna I wanna work on this. And I took a picture of it. And I look at that sketch compared to the final one here. And I'm like, this isn't even the same drawing. And that's kind of fun to see where it's like the improvement just within one single piece. It's, I guess like a healthy way to kind of regard your own art, even in the middle of the process is if you are getting frustrated with anatomy or posing or certain details or how a certain shape works in a certain perspective or anything like that. I think it's important to kind of remember that 
that even if you're doing it quote badly, you're still learning. I don't want to sound patronizing with that, but like I try to I try to just approach my art if I'm getting frustrated or it's like, okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do what I can with the knowledge and skill level I have and recognize where I need to improve. So then afterwards or even during the process, I feel like I say process like 400,000 times in this video. I don't know, maybe I only said it like once or twice, but to kind of pay a special attention to the part that I was struggling with. Uh, you know, if it was how I couldn't freaking figure out how to bend <laughs> his right arm there. I guess my point is don't get discouraged by what you don't know and also don't get frightened off by what you don't know. I think it's better to do something badly than not do it at all. You're gonna get more value from failing and understanding what to not do. So here I finally got my final sketch and I'm kind of working on like a lighting idea here with the shading and the sketch. I am not the very best. Wow, I'm okay. I was having trouble with the um, canvas and like trying to decide on a composition there. At this point, I was still feeling like something was off, but I also was able to reach a point of like my skill levels capped. So every time I work on a piece, if I'm trying to get something right and I just can't seem to do it, it's like, okay, this I just don't have the ability to do yet. So we're just going to do our very best with what we have and commit and move forward. For example, I don't think this arm, the one that he's holding in front of him, is quite right. I don't think it's terrible. I don't know. I could be overthinking it, but it's definitely better than the first time I tried to do this pose with an old drawing. It was actually an old drawing of Kaya that I was trying to do with a similar pose, but it was so bad where I just cropped it down to his face because I was so frustrated trying to get the, the arm pose right. So the fact that I tried this pose again and was able to get it at least so that I didn't feel like I had to erase the whole thing. We love progress in that regard. So since we're doing some Genshin fan art here, um, maybe we should talk about Genshin a little bit. I adore the game. It has been my entire personality for like at least about a year. I started playing in November last year. I can't remember exactly what day. From the moment that I downloaded it to like right now, it is just my entire focus. <laughs> like this game has done a lot for me, frankly, like just as a coping mechanism. I've made friends through this game because I eventually made my way over to like Twitch to watch streaming because I was just so obsessed with the game and I'd never really been on Twitch before. I had an account to follow some YouTubers who had Twitches, but I never even, I never really tuned into streams over there. So it wasn't until January this year that I found a Twitch community around Genshin and just really integrated. And like that alone was pretty profound to me, pretty influential. I've made a lot of friends there. I'm a mod for that channel now, which is cool. So just a lot of growth in that regard. It's been a social outlet for me. Even before pandemic, I just lived a very isolated kind of lifestyle just due to personal limitations, environmental limitations, living in a community where I just don't like anybody here. So this game has been really important to me and I love it a lot. And Albedo is one of my favorite characters. If I was forced to, my first favorite character is Zhongli. I just love that man to no end. I can't even begin to explain. He's very special to me. Albedo would be second. This is like by the most infinitesimal margin though. And I love Albedo because he's just me. Like when they first announced him last year for his debut, my mind was blown down to the fact of like distractible artist who doesn't enjoy many social instances, who loves dessert. We even have the same hair. He's a very special character to me and I just have really projected onto him a lot. So this current event now that's in the game, as of posting this video, it's current, you know, the fact that it's about him. Super, super cool with that. I love, we love that sweet, juicy favorite character lore. After Albedo would probably be Kazuha, uh, another very special boy. He just is a very endearing character to me. Um, I'm very soft for him. And then probably Kaya. Kaya was my first main for so long. Uh, he was my first friendship 10. He's part of the reason I started even playing the game because I had seen fan art of him somewhere and was like, hmm, this, this looks like a good piece of media. Not the sole reason I started playing. I also started playing because I kept seeing ads for it on different social pages or whatever and was like, okay, this is 
interesting. And Storm Terror was in some of the promo art and I am but a simple creature. I see dragon, I click button. I just love creature design. That's one of my passions in being a, you know, like an artist. That's one of my favorite, favorite things to draw is like monsters and makeup creatures. So I had seen him in promo art and was like, okay, that's it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check this out because it says it's free. It says it's an RPG. It says it's open world. This is all very curious to me. So went ahead and downloaded it and here the fuck we are is me having nothing but Genshin brain rot. Coming back to the art now, uh, I finally got my flats down and I'm working on the shading, the lighting. And when it comes to me making art, this is the part of my like quote style that I have the hardest time with because most of the time I just don't know what I like or what I even want my art to look like. There are certain things I do enjoy, like the way that I used like a soft airbrush to get that gentle gradient like on the background. I like that effect. I sort of do a bit of a cell shade, a little bit of a softer cell shade that I do like. I guess I just have a hard time, especially when looking at other people's art and in when I like it, I'm like, do I like this because I recognize this person's talent and appreciate their style for them? Or is this how I want my art to look? Trying to distinguish what, what do I appreciate and what do I envy <laughs> in, in, in a, in a healthy-ish way. I kind of don't stray often from the same methods just because I don't necessarily know how to do a lot of different things and one thing I really want to do more of is practicing just color and shading and lighting but part of the problem is I need to construct a sketch and some line art to kind of get there. Something that I kind of want to look into is just sometimes just doing like coloring pages to practice and kind of get the hang of different coloring styles or even maybe just take like old line arts that I have and then saving a new copy where I just like remove the existing colors in it and then just kind of mess around that way. You know, I need to to sketch and draw more too but I do notice when I do make a sketch and I do the lines it I just have this paralysis for lack of a better word where it's like I don't really know what I want to do with this but everything's a process it's all part of the process it's never ending <laughs> learning and stuff I mean right now the the real goal is to just get back into making art at all and make it a habit again because I can't worry about getting better at it if I'm not doing it in the first place. So we're working on that regardless of how quote unquote good it is. Just the fact that I am starting a piece, finishing a piece. This is an important thing for me to do. Um, I'm really glad that I did take just that little doodle from my sketchbook and turned it into something like this. But I'm glad that I went through with it. The real trick now is just gonna be keeping up with that. What I need to do is, you know, make some changes and integrate new habits and, or or revive old habits and replace current habits with better ones. This is where I'm at now. Even if I don't make a finished piece, a finished piece, just making time for art and sitting down and just messing around in my sketchbook, even if it's the most kindergarten type of doodles and sketches and just drawing lines and circles and with random markers, you know, it's the, it's the point that I'm making time for it and thinking about sitting down to make art. I think that's an important step that I need to give credit for because not only is getting better at art of process but the process of just making healthier changes in my day-to-day -day life that's gonna be an ongoing thing too so it's all about small steps and you know those those small goals breaking things down into achievable achievable steps and giving credit where credit is due and just because you know a certain achievement may be small comparatively to certain other goals you may have, I don't think that makes them less valuable. I think sometimes even if the true value in it is just the fact that it contributes towards those larger goals, that's, I think that's still deserving of, you know, the old pat on the back. It's important to be fair to yourself and be realistic, both in giving credit to what you did do and being realistic about what just is not fair to ask of yourself. If it's something like you're trying to make a giant change all at once, maybe that's not the best approach. For example, this video I'm uploading later, my first couple of videos, I was able to post, you know, very consistently over the weeks, but I was like burning out before I even knew what I was doing. So I just decided that for now, I will upload videos as I have them, but I will still be trying to make the habit of working on them because this is a creative outlet too. And um, I take a lot of value in it. 
for that. So with that all said, I uh, just wanna say thanks for joining me on this step in my art journey. Whether or not you are working on your own project uh, in the course of this video, if you didn't find my company too intolerable, feel free to do the old uh, like, comment, and subscribe song and dance, and maybe I will see you around next time. Till then, wishing you all luck and patience and inspiration or whatever else you might need to uh, help carry you along on your own journeys. <laughs>